Hello and welcome to the On the Couch podcast, the podcast that gives you the view from the therapist chair. I'm your host, John Dennis, a licensed professional counselor. You're listening to OTC episode 18 with John Israel of the Mr. Thank You Project. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for checking in. And it's good to be back with you guys. Uh, We took a little bit of a break and used up uh, a number of the banked uh, interviews that we had stored up. So I am back in front of the microphone again. And I'm really excited to share the the On the Couch podcast has been picked up on iHeartRadio. So we are now on... I would say pretty much all the all the major ones in terms of yeah iHeartRadio, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, yeah. Today I get to share with you uh, a really inspiring story. Uh, a guy named John Israel who wrote the book The Mister Thank You Project, and if you just go to MrThankYou.com. You you can learn a lot more about who he is and the journey that he's been on. So his whole whole thing is just looking to elevate the level of gratitude on the planet by just even one percent. Uh, which, when you think about it, is just such a, a mind blowing goal and, and so needed. I mean. It, um, I learned about John Israel through his TEDx talk and uh, an interview that he did with with Joe Sanok, uh, who I had on earlier in the year, and was just blown away by by this guy's story. Uh, when you when you hear him speak, if if you have the the opportunity, I highly recommend it. Um, he's just super down to earth, really genuine, just uh, an amazingly nice guy. A wealth of, of knowledge and wisdom, and um, so I, I was really, really excited that I was able to catch up with him and, and be able to kind of nail down some time to to talk with him about what he's doing with the Mister Thank You Project, how the whole thing came about, um, and so you get to hear him tell a couple of the the stories from. Uh, his book and just talking about his life at home with his wife and kids and his um, uh, participation in uh, front row dads and and that whole movement that uh, that uh, you know podcast with John Vroman and the uh, events that they have uh, throughout the country during the year. Um, so again, I I'm really excited that I got the chance to to share this with you guys. So I hope you enjoy. So a little bit about John Israel. Uh, he's been featured on on a number of different things, uh, everything from ABC News, Fox News, uh, TEDx, like I'd mentioned. He's he's been on Pop Sugar. He's been on MarthaStewart.com. dot uh, com, and and he's a, a Hall of Fame business achiever. He's author, professional speaker, and he lives in Plano, Texas, uh, with his wife Monica and uh, two boys, Anderson and Roan. Uh, you'll hear him talk about you know, life with them and, and ways that he's tried to apply this concept of gratitude and, um, and just sort of spreading that from, from his family on out. So the one thing I'd wanted to say just before we jump to the interview is just towards the end of the interview, you can kind of hear uh, some of the sound go out, uh, just some of the connection that we had uh, went a little wonky at points. So I, I apologize for that. Uh, we work really hard to try to bring you guys the best best sound quality that we possibly can. And, you know, sometimes that, that's, that's just life. It just happens where it doesn't always work out the way you plan with internet connectivity and phone calls and things like that that, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy. So I have on the show today, uh, John Israel, also known as Mr. Thank You uh, from the Mr. Thank You Project, and just so, so looking forward to, to sitting down and talking with you. So I'm really glad we were we were able to make this work. Welcome to the On the Couch podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, John. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm I'm familiar with you from uh, your interview with Joe Sanok and and your book, uh, but I, I imagine most of our listeners are not. Can you can you kind of give us the background? How how did the project come to be? Yeah, so so the Mister Thank You Project. I'll give a uh, I'll give two stories, like what it is now, and then where the origins kind of came from, and and uh, we can kind of go from there. But um, so the Mister Thank You Project started in in uh, October of 2016, where I made a one year commitment to write five handwritten thank you cards every single day for 365 consecutive days. And it was kind of in an attempt to see how it would affect my life interpersonally, um, how it would affect me emotionally. Uh, it really had a high value for gratitude at that time in my life. Um, Business-wise, what I did was I was a, a, a corporate gifting consultant. So kind of a weird job. But what I would do <laughs> is I would literally go into companies and businesses and, and I, would, I would help them find the best way to express gratitude with their clients and employees. So I'd basically, I, essentially, I was a gratitude salesman if you want to put it uh, specifically. And so the origins of, of kind of where this started um, was early in my career. I was 19 years old. This is back when I lived in San Diego, California. It's my hometown. And uh, it, was in, it was after my freshman year of college when I got a job selling Cutco knives uh, house to house <laughs> as, a, as a college student. And I was just basically doing it to you know, make money for school. I didn't you know, necessarily have a uh, oh, high value for, for cutlery or marketing or sales. I was like, I just need to make money for school. But um, so I, I picked up this job and I remember um, going in and seeing this client. Her name was Cynthia and she was this nice woman. She was a, a nurse. And um, I just said, went over to her house and, you know, did pr the presentation of my knives. And she, you know, bought a modest amount, a few hundred dollars worth of our product. And, and overall, it was a good appointment. What I really appreciated, though, was that Cynthia was just a great human being. I just really get, enjoyed getting to meet her, learn about her life and just like where she like where she came from and her boys that she was so proud of who had just moved out of the house and were independent now and it was just one of those like you know I wish she would adopt me you know she's like <laughs> one of those really great awesome friendly people and then I left you know I finished the appointment took her order and and uh, it was on my way and then a day later I got a phone call from Cynthia and she was calling me to cancel her order oh no and I was really confused because at this point in my career, no one had ever canceled anything on me and I, I didn't know what to do or what to say. And, and I was like, is this something I did? Is this something I said? Like, what can I do? And she's like, you know, I, I can't talk more about it, but I just, I just need you to cancel my order. And I was like, okay. And I, and so I did, you know, I canceled her order and, you know, no questions asked. And I was just really, um, hmm. concerned and confused because I didn't know what had happened. Cause that, again, that had never happened before. And I still was thinking about it a day or two later and, you know, John, I can't fully explain what possessed me to do this, but I decided to write her a thank you card. And I, essentially what – because what I was really noticing is when I was asking myself, like, why am I so upset about this? I'm sure people can't say this all the time. Why is this so bothering me? And what I got clear about was it wasn't that I had lost a sale. It was that I had lost a relationship. Hmm. And so for me, that was just some clarity that really helped me be like, yeah, that's actually why I'm what what matters to me here. And so I just wanted to let her know that. So I wrote a letter that essentially said, uh, dear Cynthia, um, I just wanted to reach out and say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity for me to sit down and demonstrate our, our, our awesome knives for you. And uh, I really appreciated uh, getting to hear about your life and your kids and your boys that you're so proud of. And, and uh, regardless of you buying anything from me, I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciated getting to know you. If you ever need anything in the future, let me know. Otherwise, take care and God bless. Right? Wow. Really simple yeah. letter. I wrote this to her. I sent it to her. And two things happened. Number one was there was this immediate experience of relief. Like there was this – I had let something go. Like this burden, this upset uh, just really lifted off of my shoulders. And that was, that was the first thing. And then about two years later, um, I am in my dorm room at Gonzaga University. That's where I went to college. And, and I get this random phone call. Uh, from a home, a, a call number back in San Diego where I'm from. And I answer the phone and, and the woman says, hey, is this Cutco John? And that's what everyone called me back then. So oh, nice. I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this, this is Cutco John. How can I help you? And she said, well, you know, I don't know if you remember me, but my name is Cynthia. And I tried to buy some knives from you a couple of years ago, but I, I canceled my order. And I was wondering if you're still selling Cutco and if I could still place an order with you. 
And you know, at the time I was, and I was like, yeah, absolutely happy to help. And so she uh, goes on to tell me what she wants to order. And she um, keeps saying items and listing items and listing items and listing items. And it was like she was reading out of her catalog everything we make. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a massive, massive order. Yeah. One of the biggest I'd ever had in my career. And and I uh, we finish up and and um, I'm just still totally perplexed as to what's happening. And then I I said or she, she actually asked me, she says, John, do you know why I'm calling you all these years later? And I said, I have no idea. She says, when. I canceled my order with you. What I couldn't tell you at the time is that I had found out I had just been diagnosed with cancer. Wow. And I was going to have to leave my job. Mm. So, And my, my boys who had moved out of the house were going to have to move back in with me. And as much as I wanted to buy those knives and to keep that order, I just I couldn't. And so I had to cancel, and I felt terrible about it. But when I got your letter in the mail, when I got your letter, I realized, I, I saw that you valued me as a human being more than a customer. And I told myself when I get healthy one day, I'm going to call this kid and I'm going to buy every damn knife he's selling. (laughs) And and that's what she did. Wow. And to me, that was such a moment of like, that's a lesson you don't get to forget, right? Learning to value a human being above a profit. And to get that lesson at 19, 20, 21, um, was life changing. And that really affected my career. And it was kind of this seed of this idea that, you know, there's an impact that a, a handwritten letter can have on somebody, you know, interpersonally, like with the writer, with the author, with the person who's writing it and to the receiver. And so it kind of like led to, you know, a couple of years later when I was, uh, you just looking to develop more purpose in my work, you know, as a, as a gratitude salesman, I was looking for something that I could do to embody my highest values of my life in a physical way as a habit every single day. Hmm. And I just had that flashback to that moment of writing that card to that woman. And I thought, well, what if I did that? What if I committed to writing thank you cards every day uh, for a year? And I love year-long challenges. I think they're a great way to grow. And so that's what I committed to doing. And there's a lot of other things that go into that. Like there were rules in place of how I, you know, honored, you know, writing the cards every day. But that that's kind of just the the nuts and bolts of where I'm at now, how this whole thing started, and just the seeds of what we're creating right now. Dang. Yeah, and uh, yeah, obviously we don't want to give it all away. You gotta, you gotta read the book. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> available on Amazon.com. That's right. And uh, yeah, as always, I, I remind people I'll have you know detailed show notes with all that stuff. So, I also liked in just the you know what you shared in the TED Talk and in the book of you know when in 2016 you know kind of getting to a place of like not being very grateful at that time, like kind of struggling with that and and you know, sort of being convicted, thinking on that, um, which I, I, yeah, it's, it, it's had an impact for me, uh, in, you know, learning about the project and reading the book because I, I've definitely struggled with that myself, still struggle with that. Um, yeah. Also just how amazing, I mean, it, what it's, you know, middle end of February right now as we record this and like, 97, 98% of people have already quit all of their, you know, New Year's resolutions. You managed to, to do it for an entire year, which is so impressive. Um, so with, with the cards, how, yeah, how did you find it starting to impact your, your relationships? Yeah, so there were – there's a couple of things that were really just eye-opener experiences, and I, I like to just share through stories. So there's like one day where two story, two experiences happened that completely just set the stage for how the rest of this year was going to go. And it was, it was day three of the project when I was boarding a plane from Los Angeles to Philadelphia for something called the Front Row Dads Retreat. And this is where um, – the Front Row Dads is a community I'm involved in of entrepreneurial fathers, and we get together twice a year to talk about how – how to become better husbands to our wives and better fathers to our children while we run successful businesses. Mm. And this was the first event we were doing ever, and it was in Philadelphia, and, and I was boarding this plane. And the interesting thing with you know having a commitment of writing five handwritten thank you cards every single day is that you have to become what I call a good finder, right? You have to start training your brain to look for uh, who's doing something great you want to acknowledge and point out and highlight and reflect back to them. 
And it's an interesting thing because as a parent, like I'm a parent with two little kids and what I've learned and, you know, uh, you're in the, the therapy and science world. So you understand there's something called a, a negative bias, which yep. is an actual thing inside the human brain where we're more prone to notice what's wrong than what's right. And as a parent, that's even more so because we see kids who just are constantly making mistakes and it, we feel it's our job, our obligation as a parent to correct wrong behavior. Mm -hmm. So we almost train ourselves to notice what's wrong. So for, for this project, it was kind of an interesting uh, shift there where it was like, okay, that, that might be there, but your job is to find five people to appreciate every day. So um, I was boarding this plane, and one of the people I, I thought about as I was boarding was you know, the pilots because I fly all the time, and, and I always pray for safe travel, and to date, 100% of the time they've delivered. So I was like, that, that's who I'm going to appreciate. So I board this plane, and uh, the first thing I do is I ask the flight attendant for the pilot's names which I learned is also a super weird question uh, that they don't normally get asked because <laughs> the reaction was just yes. like, why do you need to know that? And I was just like, oh, I'm going to write him a thank you card. And she's like, okay. So she gives me the names and I sit down and I pull out some stationery and a really interesting challenge comes up, which is how do you thank somebody that you don't even know? Mm -hmm. And what I learned, there's this great uh, term to understand the word appreciate better, which is the root of the word is called is a pretiare, which is Latin for to appraise or to set the value of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so when you appraise something, for example, like you're going to sell a home, you hire an appraisal appraiser to come out and, and do an assessment. They have a list of questions they ask about, you know, what condition is the property in? You know, how are the doors? How is the roof? You know, where is it located? What are the comps for other properties in the neighborhood? Like they've got these these things they do to go through and give an assessment of what is this house worth? So it's an interesting question uh, to say, well, how do you apply that to a human being? And what I learned is there's just this being curious about their true nature, being curious about their life. And so a great way to appreciate someone you don't know is to ask, and even somebody you do know, and this is where I think it translates beyond strangers or relatives or friends or family is to just ask the questions, you know, who is this person? What do they care about? What are their highest values? What are their biggest challenges? What are they struggling with every day? And you don't need to know 100% of those answers from that person's mouth to get an idea of what their life might be like. And so what came out for me as I wrote this letter was to essentially say, you know, a uh, dear pilot, um, I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm sure it's strange to receive a thank you card from a passenger. But as I was boarding this plane, I realized that uh, I missed my family. And I realized also in that moment that this is what you do for a living. I can't imagine how many birthday parties, anniversaries, family get togethers that you've had to miss for your job. And not to mention the countless hours that you spent in training and preparation for what you do today. And all of that to have some turbulence and a slightly bumpy landing only to have people complain about it. Mm -hmm. So whether you hear it enough or not, thank you for everything you do for us on this plane. Mm -hmm. You know, signed, you know, John Israel and everyone on this plane. And I... I wrote four of those cards because there was two flights and there was two pilots each flight. So I basically got their names, I wrote the card, and I handed it to them on my way out because a lot of times they're still in the cockpit or I handed it to the flight attendant and I said, hey, give these to the pilots. That, that's how I – because people ask, like, well, how would you get their address? It wasn't always a needing of the address. I would just give it to them if I could by hand. Sure. So I gave the cards out. And what was interesting about this, John, is that those cards were on my business stationery, which had my name, my phone number, and my email. Here's what was crazy. Within 24 hours of landing, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, of writing those cards after landing in Philly, I got communication back by email or by text from three out of those four pilots thanking me for the card that they received. Mm. How crazy is that? To get an yeah. email or a text message from your pilot. Yep. Yeah. And then <laughs> one of them went on to say, you know, John, in my 12 years of flying, I've I've never received a thank you card from a passenger. Mm. So thank you. And it was just this mind boggling moment of, wow, these are guys who have a very significant, very important job with literally thousands of lives on the line every day. And no one says, thank you. Mm -hmm. Like that to me is a problem. I just, I view yeah. that as like, what an opportunity. And I thought, well, if it's like that for them, what about everybody else in the world? What about everyone else in their jobs, in their relationships, in their communities? They're undervalued and underappreciated in what they do. 
so I started to see some of the value that was really coming through here. And then the, the, the second part to that story, um, is that when I landed in Philadelphia, I got together with all the front row dads and we had this whole experience and it was great. And we finished off the night by going to a bar slash restaurant to kind of get together in, in community and get to know each other in fellowship because we didn't really know each other yet. So about, uh, imagine this group of like 40 entrepreneurial dudes walking into this <laughs> bar, like this dive bar with no reservation. And the, rolling, you, you rolling see deep. the look. Yeah, the, that <laughs> waitress. And there was one waitress working that night. And oh. it, you can tell we just like ruined her night by the oh. look on her face. Just like, oh, my God. So she ushers us to the back of the uh, the restaurant bar to you know have her own room so we don't disturb everyone else there. And she, her name was Shantae, by the way. And Shantae wound up doing a phenomenal job. She, again, by herself as a waitress, I mean, she took all of our orders, all of our drink orders, all of our food orders. She even recruited the cook staff in the back to bring the food out to us. I mean, she did like an amazing level 10 job of, of performance. And what was interesting is you could tell in the moment, like when I first saw her, she was like pissed. Mm-hmm. And then she totally lightened up and was great. And so when I was finishing the, the, the meal, I realized I'm like, okay, okay, she's my number five. She's my final card for the day. So I pull out some stationery and I, I wrote a note that essentially said, um, you know, Shantae, uh, I know it might seem weird to receive a thank you card from a patron, but I wanted to, um, just let you know how much tonight really meant to us. Um, you don't know this, but we're a group of entrepreneurial guys here for a conference to learn how to bet, become better husbands to our wives and fathers to our children while we run our businesses. And tonight was about fellowship and about getting together and about celebration. And we know we came in with no reservation. We know that you could have been totally upset and annoyed and given us crappy service and we would have understood, but you didn't. And you were great and you were amazing and you helped tonight be uh, off the hook. So I just wanted to let you know, thank you on behalf of myself and everybody here in the front row dads. And so I wrote this net, this letter and I, I Shanti is over in the corner, kind of cashing in her tips and her receipts and everything. So I walk over with a note and I hand it to her and she accepts it awkwardly as most strangers do when I hand them a thank you card. And, uh, and I start walking out of the restaurant and I realize I need to go to the bathroom. So I kind of do a U-turn, go back into the restaurant, go to the restroom. And then I come out and Shantae is standing there, like <laughs> waiting for me. And she's got this like a little smirk on her face. And then she just has her head cocked to the side. And she just opens her arms and just runs at me and gives me the biggest bear hug of my life and says, that is the best tip <laughs> ever given. That's huge, man. Yeah. And then she put me down. Uh, <laughs> and and it was this um, this moment where we just we didn't say anything after that looked at each other in the eyes and we were both just kind of like welling up with some tears. And it was this, this moment of, it was no longer customer server, right? It was just a human being, human being, like really just getting each other. Right. And I, I left walking back to my hotel on that cold Philly night. And I just remember thinking, um, like, this is it. Like, this is not about me writing a lot of cards to feel any certain way. Like I got that. I was, it felt great to write that letter. But how much more impactful was it for her to receive it? She said that was the best tip that she's ever gotten. Keep in mind, we gave her a absolutely massive tip because it was 40 of us. dudes were pretty generous, and I'm sure we loaded her up. But no, this card, this is the most valuable. This is the biggest tip I've ever gotten. That, that tells me there's something magical about this idea of one of the greatest values that I learned in that moment that people need is just to be seen Mm -hmm. and to be seen for their greatness rather than their weakness. It's really easy for us to point out what's wrong with people. But when we have this commitment to finding out what's great and then highlighting it and reflecting it back, it's really amazing how people start to show up in the world and, and in our life. So it was like after that moment, like, again, that was day three. Yeah, that was like early on. Yeah, like 362 more days of this going on. So there was this this realization of like, I have to accomplish this. Like any part of me that was doubting I could do it, because writing five cards every day is a lot. I mean, that's 1,825 yeah. thank you cards throughout the year. And so if there's any doubt that I would or wouldn't co- accomplish it, I, that was the moment where I was like, no way, I've, I've got to do this. This means too much to people. And that's, uh, I mean, on the one end, I mean, it's awesome response, but it's also like got to set the bar kind of high of <laughs> to get that kind of response also. Um, yeah, you were talking about the bias and just um, 
the ability to, you know, when you're writing to kind of put yourself in their shoes, you know, that idea of empathy and really trying to think about, okay, what do, what do they go through on a daily basis and what are the things they're facing? And I mean, like you said, going back to, to Cynthia, uh, you just never know. You never know what somebody else is going through. And yeah, that's just so mind blowing. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Can I, can you hit on something that I think is actually really important, which is that, that empathy concept. So th this is like a, a quote that kind of came out some, somewhere during the project, which was, um, you know, curiosity is the birthplace of appreciation. And when we, and appreciation is really the starting point for empathy, right? Like when we can appreciate someone's life and where they're at, like we can develop empathy and understanding of where they are. And when we have empathy, we begin to develop compassion. And when we have compassion, we have the ability to really connect with anyone. You know, and that's what I love. If you look at the life of someone like a mother Teresa, why was she able to like just lift people up and, and take care of them in the worst of worst circumstances? There's no value they could add to her in a monetary way. There was, there was just this, like this deep love and compassion from this, just like curiosity that drove her of like, how can I serve the world at the highest level? And you know, who are these people? What do they need? And it's this, they just need, they need love. They need compassion. And so that, that to me was really this kind of eye opening thing where empathy it's, 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 it's super valuable, but it's kind of like, how do you get it? How do you create empathy? And I think that's really the starting point. It's that curiosity. It's that, de that desire to appreciate somebody's world. Well, and I think it can, I would imagine it's almost sort of a, addictive, you know, in a, in a good way of like wanting to make somebody's day, wanting to, to positively impact somebody else. You know, you and I were talking about the, um, the Gottman counseling and, um, appreciating other people. Like that's a, that's a huge part of, uh, especially romantic, but family relationships. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, uh, Dr. Gary Chapman, his book, the five love languages, but, uh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That concept of, you know, that, that words of praise and affirmation being, being such a huge love language, you know, we all want that. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. That's cool. You said that because I think I can share this with your audience. I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally bring this up, but especially if some of them are in relationships or you, you desire to be in a relationship or create a great one. The five love languages is a, is a phenomenal book. And there is the, the five languages, which are uh, words of affirmation, acts of service, gifts, quality time, and then kinesthetic touch. Is that, yep. did I, yep. is that all of them? Okay. Yep. So here, here's a, a different way to consider how this, like, and, and this is what I tr encourage people to do. Like, you don't have, like, I'm not saying do what I did. Yeah. Don't <laughs> write five cards every day. It was number one, really hard. Like it was very challenging. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of that in the book where you'll hear about crazy stuff that happened during the project, even just to stay in alignment and finish it. Mm -hmm. Um, but th what was there is this idea of like, so for me, you know, my highest values or my love languages are words of affirmation and acts of service. And so for me, a different way to look at it in the language of the five love languages was honoring my love language five times a day, every day for 365 days. How might you feel in your life? Like, so for example, there's a guy that I met and I didn't think of this until right now, but, um, he saw me speak at a conference and, and he was like, Oh man, I love, I love what you're doing. He's like, I have a similar thing that I do where I have a commitment that I hug at least three people every single day. And I'm like, really, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I, he's like, I have, he's like two years in a row, not missing a day of hugging at least three people every single day. And he just, and as awkward as it needs to be, like <laughs> hugging the Starbucks barista, like, or finding a way to like have a conversation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not <laughs> hang out the playground. That'd be weird. Uh, but just, uh, that for him, you know, I would not be surprised if for him, kinesthetic touch was a love language. Oh, he felt at a high level. So for me, it was really just, um, it, there was also some alignment there of like honoring that value for me, which really helped me feel great at, uh, on a different level every day. Cause I was forced to do that. Sure. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I like that you had said that in, in the book, you know, that idea of like, don't, don't do what I did. <laughs> like I, I was thinking of, um, I think it was, is it AJ Jacobs? 
Um, I don't know if you you had read that book or heard of him, uh, The Year of Living Biblically. Love that book. Yeah. So he like <laughs> that that idea of you know the experiential journalism and and doing it. But yeah, there's there's a cost that comes to it. So you better be prepared. <laughs> yeah. There, honestly, there's probably a bit of my um, like inspiration from that book because I think there I, I was so I thought it was such an interesting thing like how committed he was to honoring for for him it was you know is the Old Testament of you know Judaism and everything everything. I was like, wow, this guy is super that's, committed yeah, and how he fought <laughs> his family with his kids. If you haven't read that book, it's a really fascinating read. It's a good listen to, I get it on audible, but audible, but yeah. Yeah. The, the other, you know, kind of going off of the, the love language, I think especially sadly, you know, not, not to be stereotypical, but a, a lot of what I find in my counseling practice is guys are usually very low on the words of affirmation scale. That's yeah. usually not one of their top two love languages. Um, um, so, yeah, I, again, just that idea of um, being willing to do that. You know, kind of, kind of lay yourself out there and like, hey, I don't, I don't know how this is going to get received, but I'm, I'm doing it. So, yeah. Um, can I, can I say something to that? By the way, because sure. I think. Because that, to, especially to speaking to if there are any guys here who maybe are challenged with that, or if you're married to someone who's challenged by that, you, you know, that you might understand this. But uh, um, even someone who is a words of affirmation guy, I lack that yeah. in, with my wife. Sometimes it's hard because yeah. she's the one who knows me the most. She knows all of my, all my greatness, all my demons. She knows everything about me. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's even that hardness for me, you know, the Mr. Thank you guy to appreciate her. And so uh, a quick thing with that was um, there's two things that I learned about, especially a man and why they are challenged with this is there is this certain level of vulnerability where you're removing the shield yeah. Right. The, the, the facade, if you will, or that, that, that thing that keeps you strong. And when you embrace this idea of, of sharing with somebody how you feel, and it doesn't have to be like this ushy gushy, like, oh, I love you and all the things you do. And here's, you know, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be really simple. And what I would say is, especially if you're not somebody who does this normally, often the, 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 it doesn't need to be a lot of words. The less words, sometimes the better. Yeah, less is more. Provided they're provided they're backed up with action. So one of the interesting things with my wife, I wrote her, uh, she, I wrote her a card at about month two of the project. We just moved to Dallas, and it was this big, full on "What I love about you" letter. Right, gave it to her, set it out for her on the table. She doesn't say anything. I don't hear anything about it. Like literally, doesn't bring it up one time. And in my head, I'm like what the hell? Like I just, you know, <laughs> pulled my heart out. You're not acknowledging it. What's going on. But I gave it up and I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, she, we just had a baby. So I'm sure she, we, we have a, we, she had like a one month old in her hand. So it was like, yeah. give her grace to her back. This isn't about me. This is about honoring you. And then, so a couple days later, I'm about to leave the house and I'm, I'm, uh, we're big coffee drinkers. So I was going to pour, so I was making, I make coffee in the morning and then I make enough for me and her and I pour it in a thermos for her to have later when she wakes up. So I was making coffee and then I realized we ran out and I was like, Oh shoot. Uh, now we had just moved to this house and we only had one car cause we moved across the country. We gave it one of our cars. And, and so I was about to leave to go see clients for the day. And I was like, okay, well I can go get coffee for me because I can just drive there on the way to my appointment. But that means she will not get any coffee. And keep in mind, we had a two year old at the time and like a one month old and she was breastfeeding, yeah. you know, <laughs> probably zero that night before it's not looking good. I'm, up, I'm about to leave the house. And then she looks at me and she says, Oh, is the coffee ready? And I was like, yeah. So we ran out. <laughs> Craziest thing. Happened. And then she was like, Oh, okay. And you could see her brain starting to stack the information of like, okay, we ran out of coffee. I need coffee. I can go to the store to get some. Oh wait, I don't have a car because you're taking my car. I'm g and I've had zero sleep. Before and Instacart, and you are gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna leave me here alone with all these kids and no coffee. And I could see just the the sadness and despair filling her, her brain. So I I was like, okay, gotta go. So I left and I, I went to go to the Starbucks to get my coffee. And it was this experience of like, okay, I was in the line at Starbucks and I'm like. Oh, you're such a jerk. You're such a jerk. You're about to just leave her <laughs> hanging with two kids, no coffee. And I was like, okay, if I bring her back coffee, 
it's going to take an extra 15 minutes, which is going to cause me to hit the worst traffic because I was in that traffic window, right? Where you're going to miss everything or you're going to yeah, hit everything. In window. Yep. <laughs> yep. So if I went back with that coffee, I was going to have the worst traffic. And so I, uh, I was like, you know, but I got to do it. I, I have to. So uh, how can I be, and here's where I, here's the moment where I decided I needed to do it. When I remembered, didn't you just write her this amazing letter telling her how much she means to you? <laughs> how, and, and, and it was this question and is this question that was, it's a question I, I still ask myself every single day. How do you treat that for which you are grateful? Mm. Like when you say you appreciate somebody, you don't therefore then to get to treat them like crap and then have the, and then there's no impact there. So I was like, I have to, I have to, there, th- this is just being aligned with what I, who I believe her to be like, which is worth it, which is, so I, I got an extra cup of coffee, drove the 15 minutes back home and I left it on the doorstep with a little, uh, card, a little index card. And all it said was Monica, you are always worth a hot cup of coffee. <laughs> Signed John. That was it. One sentence. I left to go to my appointment and which I was totally going to be late for. Um, interesting thing with that. Number one, uh, my client wound up being late. So it was totally fine go. that I, because <laughs> it, 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 so that was fine. And then two, the traffic while I was in traffic, I got to have this experience of being in traffic, not like regretting because I could have a shorter commute and then be feeling like a piece of crap or because I didn't give her coffee, or I could feel great for the next 45 minutes. Even though I'm in traffic. And, and yeah. she took a photo of that. Uh, I just basically sent her a text message, and I said, hey, open the front door. And then I drove away. And she sees the coffee. She takes a photo, puts it on her Instagram, and she messages me and says, you know, this is the best card you've ever written me. And that's, uh, you know, for the, for listeners that may not be familiar with, uh, like, I would say that's, you know, the acts of service and the love language. You know, it's kind of the the two together. Yeah. yeah. And so, so for me, it really was totally honoring that, you know, my, my love language is, and for her, it's words of affirmation. So, uh, but the whole idea was just proving that she's worth it. And so there, there was this, this component of like, how, how could I write this big, long, juicy love letter and then, a, <laughs> and then a one sentence letter. And this is the one that is the most impactful because really that letter, I think was also, it was tied up with evidence that I, I, I honor what I say. And I think as a, as a husband, as a, as a spouse, I think that's what's important is to understand that there, it's not just a one-time thing you say, you, I love you, or one-time thing you say, you write her a letter, but it's paired with how you choose to treat them moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you were saying about, you know, how do you treat that which you're grateful for? It's just so, so convicting, but so, so important for people to hear because, yeah, I, I definitely I fall victim to that all the time. I don't live that out, uh, sadly. You're listening to OTC episode 18 with John Israel of the Mr. Thank You Project. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. Life is hard, but Parenting and Family Solutions is here to help. Our board certified counselors are easy to talk to and offer a safe, encouraging environment to help you with your unique needs. We specialize in helping clients of all ages deal with depression, anxiety, marriage issues, screen addiction, and ADHD, just to name a few. We now have daytime and evening appointments available in Harrisburg and Lancaster and accept most major insurance plans. Visit our website to learn more at www.parentfamilysolutions.com or give us a call at 717-602-5560. Let us help you build a stronger family and a healthier you. With you were talking about um, front row dads, so yeah, can you kind of unpack that a little bit? I don't know if you know when the next event is or what it is, um, but for people that aren't yeah. familiar with it, sure. So the front row dads is uh, it's it's still in existence. It's going strong, stronger every year, and there's about eighty. I think about 80 guys in it now. When I first went, it was about 40. Oh, wow. um, and so they, yeah, they meet twice a year, usually one in Austin, Texas, where the founder John Roman lives. And then the other one is typically in a, a different location. So they've had it in Philadelphia, Miami, 
Santa Cruz, California, um, just somewhere different because we have guys from all over the country that go. And uh, the Front Row Dads is a really interesting group. If you want to learn more, a simple way to do it, frontrowdads.com is their website. You can also, John Vroman has his own podcast. You can hear a little bit more about who they are and that'll, you know, if that's something you're interested in or if you're married to someone who's an entrepreneur, it's a great thing to refer out to them because it's good personal development content that it's also aligned with being a parent. And John uh, Vroman, the founder, is a good friend of mine. And, you know, we were talking to, recently about starting it. Like, why did you, I said, like, why did you start Front Row Dads? And his big thing was, you know, there was a moment where, you know, there's people who are, it's like businessmen who have a family and it's like, they're known for their business success. They're known for all they create in the world and what they conquer. And then they also are a family person. Yeah. And he's like, I didn't want to be that way. I wanted to be a family man who also runs a business. And he's like, I think that just shifting that around completely changes Number one, how people view you, how they treat you, how you interact with your life, your business, your family, to understand them as a priority, as the number one, and then the business supports everything. So that's kind of what the what their group is about, and the, anything ranging from you know fitness challenges to getting you know great health, or uh, a lot of times they just they have different guests and they have some amazing uh, lecturers or authors that come to the events. Um, Jim Shields comes to mind, fam, uh, author of the Family Board Meeting, or I think they they uh, changed the name to Eighteen Summers. Uh, this concept of like you with your kids, you only get eighteen summers with them if they're in school. So like, how do you treat those summer? Man. Yeah, it, that alone, right? Just hearing that, like, oh damn, like that brings a little intentionality. And yeah. so that's the community. That's who it's filled with, and it's guys who are just really in, committed to being intentional fathers. And uh, so the front row. So it was, it was a really, um, you know. By the way, can I share with you get an interesting story about that sure, with the Mister Thank yeah. You Project? Okay. So this was an intentional. So for me, it, like the Mr. Thank you project was like a social, like a social science experiment for me where it was like, what can I do with this to build community, to deepen relationships and to do certain things? So I was like, I wonder what I can do to deepen relate. Cause it, for me, I was really low on the male relationships. Yeah. Right. Like, so for me, I was like, I got along really well with women. I grew up with three sisters. It was very easy for me to understand them and what they're like and yada, yada, yada. But at the same time I grew up, I just never really, uh, hung on to very many relationships from college or, or anything like that. So I saw the front row dads as like, this is my opportunity to really connect with guys of similar values. So, um, after the first event, I sent each of the guys a thank you card and I tried to highlight something that they said that I really appreciated, right? That was the first step. So the second time, six months later, we do another event. And what I wanted to do was to practice strengthening community. So as I met again with each of the guys and got to know them more, I asked them a question, um, which is what's your wife's name and what do you love about your wife? And it was really interesting to see all these guys just, you know, macho, like some alpha male dudes who are, mm-hmm. who are, you know, pretty, pretty solid dudes, like get choked up talking about how much they really love their wife. And it, it was amazing. Anything from like, you know, I love how much she takes care of the kids. or I love how she gave up her career to be a stay at home mom. Or I love how, you know, she still works while being a mom. Like every, everyone had different answers. And so what I decided to do was after that event is I wrote every single one of the wives, wow. a thank you letter on behalf of the, the, uh, the front row dads community and their husband. And here, here's how I did it. So I would, I just said, you know, Hey, uh, Angela, you know, my name is John Israel. We've never met. Um, but I'm a member of the front row dads community. And I just want to reach out and say, thank you for creating the space for your husband to make it out to our last event. Um, he had some amazing things that he said that were a real contribution to the event and him being there really mattered. And what I loved is when I asked him, what do you love about Julie? He said, and then I would just insert whatever they told me they loved about their wife. Mm -hmm. And then I would just say, so thanks again for everything. Hopefully our families get together one day. Take care. God bless. Mm -hmm. Sent the letter out. And so I was, so when I did this, John, I was terrified. I'm like, this could go completely wrong. Like I'm sending all these (laughs) dudes lives. A letter and like that, you know, I didn't yeah. know how that could come across. <laughs> it's definitely like, a leak. Like it, great, or you get punched in the face and never invited yeah. back to an event. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen. And dude, the response was overwhelming. I got guys messaging me, calling me, yeah. sending me emails. Dude, my wife cried when she read your letter. Like it meant so much. You totally didn't have to do that. And there was all these guys that 
um, suddenly had a different view of who John Israel is yeah. and who John, who John Israel is. And this is what I wanted to create. Who John Israel is, is that by me being in your life, all your relationships around you are better nice. wow. or your most important relationship is better because I am in community with you. And I didn't say that, but that was the intention. And, uh, it was really interesting to just, cause I, I actually wound up being on the front row dads podcast shortly after that. And I asked, I asked John, you know, I said, Hey, so what have you noticed? Like, since I, you know, did that, what have you noticed different? Or like, why, why do you, what impact do you think that had? He said, I think your network equity inside of our community is extremely high. Yeah. And I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't think about that, but that, that was what, that's where it kind of opened my eyes to. There is value to being known as the encourager, as the supporter, as Mm -hmm. the, because here's what I know is going to happen for these guys is they're going to have a great time. They're going to come home. And number one, their wife's going to be like, thank God I can finally take some of these, this work off of my shoulders because you're here now. And they're going to, and then there's going to be this point when he's going to ask about going to the next event. And then there's going to be a conversation of how hard it was and how much extra work it was for her. And there's going to be like somewhat of a negative emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, uh, kind of exactly create a concept that for them, man, this was so hard for you and it was so worth it because your husband is, is an amazing contribution and he's going to come back better. And so I think by doing that, it created space for all the guys with their wives to have a better conversation about coming back to an event. So I say this because there are some of you who might have groups or communities or you're in, in, uh, with work, or if you're involved in a school where there's something about not just appreciating a specific person, but appreciating those around them to strengthen the community. And that was like a, it was kind of a crazy, it's like Mr. Thank you 201. Like, I don't necessarily <laughs> say start with that, oh, yeah. but I think there, I think there, it, it was like this evolution that kept happening. The more cards that I wrote, the more I was like, man, what else could I do with this? How else can I create community? How else can I deepen relationships? Uh, and it was really, really interesting to see all the different ways that it showed up. Yeah. And it, it made me think of, um, uh, I don't know if you ever saw, uh, they had a documentary on Netflix called the other F word. Uh, it was uh, basically this collection of all these, you know, sort of father figures that were like, you know, sort of the godfathers of punk, like 80s, 90s punk more so than like Sex Pistols and, and way back. But um, but uh, Art Alexakis from Everclear was one of the dads. And so that it's kind of the idea of like, OK, you used to be, you know, anarchy and damn the man and now you're a dad. Now you're on the other side of it and you've got to like try to raise kids and how do you how do you juxtapose those two things? Um, and he talked about uh, his kids' friends coming to him and talking to him and confiding in him and saying, you know, wow, like – you're such an amazing dad. I, I wish you were my dad. You know, I wish you were in my life. And he was saying like, you know, with his, his background and his history that, you know, yeah, I I wish I was my dad too. I wish I had had somebody in my life that did this for me that, you know, took the time to listen to me and speak to me and, and all of that. So that's, oh man, that's so awesome that you, you did that. Yeah. And I can't even imagine just the impact that that had in, in building those relationships um, right off the bat. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, it's been great. So off of that with – and that's kind of where I was, was hoping to go with the, uh, the other F word is, yeah, you have kids. How do you teach them to, to be grateful? That's a great question. There's, um, <clears throat> and there's a, uh, the, I, I open the book, uh, the Mr. Thank You Project book by saying, um, gratitude and, uh, you know, happiness is different from gratitude because you don't have to teach a child to be happy, but you do need to teach them to say thank you. Yeah. Right. And there's this natural component of happiness where it's like you just do what makes you happy. You know, when you feel happy and that it's, it's a state to be in. And then but gratitude is different because gratitude is a reflective state where it's like something happened and you have to take a moment to look at it and add meaning. Right. Like I'm going to look at the And so, th- by the way, this is a great definition of the word gratitude, which is gratitude is the emotion one feels when you receive a gift or experience something as a gift. Mm. And that, that, 
definition opens a lot of ways you can bring gratitude into your life because it could be someone said, happy birthday, here is a, a gift card for 50 bucks to Amazon, right? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I'm feeling gratitude. You gave me a gift. I'm feeling it. Thank you. And they reflect it back, right? And then there's this moment of like, what if something like terrible happened to you as a child or in your life or in your marriage and, in you, and you're upset about it? There is this idea that you can adopt or choose not to, that in every life experience, there's a gift. Mm. And you can look at something with just the question of like, yeah, that sucked. Where is the gift in this experience? What can I learn from this? So like that, that definition of gratitude really sticks with me. So on this concept of like with children, right, how do you teach children about gratitude? And there's one simple way, which is like for me, like I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And there's just this concept of like there's still like a short-term memory. Like they still don't even know all the days of the <laughs> yeah. week yet, right? Mm-hmm. Like not there yet. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's some still little things. But just on, the, on a little, little simple scale – of just saying like, you kind of have to do it for them and just involve them. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, mom will like make them oatmeal and then I'll reach, I'll lean over to Anderson and I'll just say, Hey, say thank you. And then he'll say, thank you, mom. And then you'll just see her face light up. And then he's excited because he made her day. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's like training and mentoring you have to do very closely. Another thing that I've learned to do is allow people to say thank you the best way they feel comfortable. So I don't proclaim to say that the thank you card is the end all be all only way to do it. I do believe that it is highly effective because, uh, number one, it, it works, right? We've got enough evidence to show that when someone gets a handwritten card, they are really blown away by it because number one, you have to take the time to buy some stationery. Mm -hmm. You have to write things down with your hand, which does that anymore. Two is you have to find their address. Three is you have to buy a stamp. Fourth is you have to somehow get it to a postal person and deliver it to them. So there's like five steps that go involved versus like how much does it take you to make a video message and just say, hey, thanks for that thing or to send a text message. It's minimal, right? Now, to not discount those things, but to say that there's a high value of writing a handwritten card. Yeah. Well, my my four-year-old's not going to do that. That's just a fact. (laughs) So – what there is to do, and I've actually even been testing this lately on myself because I want to find more efficient and effective ways of expressing love and gratitude, is to do a video message, right? So like if we got a gift in the mail from grandma or, or something like so there's a friend or a family member, we'll just like FaceTime them or we'll mm-hmm. like record a video and we'll just, you know, we'll practice what to say and then they'll just say, hey, grandma, I just want to say thank you so much for blah, 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 blah. And then uh, we'll send it and then grandma gets all excited and she's all grateful. And it's, it's such a funny thing that – um what I've learned in talking to people who like really connect with the Mr. Thank You project, sometimes it's not like an age specific thing, but what I, people just say, say things differently, right? Like, so people who are in an older generation say, oh my gosh, like, I love this. This is, you, was a pastime of ours. It's so great. You're bringing this back, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. And then there's some people who are younger that are like, wow, this is so cool. Nobody does this. Yeah, this is novel. <laughs> so, so because of that, there's a high value to it. But at the same time, any form of just saying, thank you for what someone did is, is valuable. And so for kid and that as a kid, I just think when my was a kid, my parents were like, Oh, you got to write cards to everybody who gave you a graduation <laughs> present. Yep. I'm pretty sure I didn't do it. Like yeah. I didn't cause it was like going to take a bunch of time and yada, yada. But if, what if the solution was my mom was like, Hey, I know you don't want to do this. It's going to take some time, but let's just make a quick video for each person who gave you a gift. You can hold the gift up and just tell them how much you appreciated it. And then we're just going to send them the video. We're going to be done with all this in 15 minutes. Yep. I'd be like, all right, let's do it. And we would just hammer it out and be done. And then the same similar impact would be as if I hand wrote a card. So I think there's just different ways of utilizing technology to express appreciation. Mm-hmm. I don't think like, I, I don't want to say like, oh, this is better. This is worse. It, it's like whatever the, the what's best is what you do. Yeah. Do something. Because, because if it's a difference of you actually sending a, a video of gratitude versus thinking about writing a card to somebody and never sending it, well then make a video. Yeah. Right. I, 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 and that's what I, I've come to understand is it doesn't even necessarily matter how you do it. It's that you do it. And that's what encourages people to continue to be generous and appreciative back to you. Well, I think of one of the things we do in our family is like as we're having dinner together, we'll we'll talk about, you know, what's something you appreciated about the day, the weekend, you know, everybody at the table, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I think just just getting creative with it. And like you said, doing something. Yeah. Oh, it. That's so cool you said that because that reminded me of one thing that I forgot we've done that is uh, wasn't related to the Mr. Thank You project. But what we have at our house is called the Wall of Gratitude, and it is literally a sign. There's a big metal sign that says thankful. And then every time we have a guest visit our house, wow, 
we allow them to sign our wall with a Sharpie. Like they're signing our kitchen wall with a Sharpie and they're writing what they're grateful for. Okay. And we have, uh, it, I mean, the kids get to do it, the adults get to do it. And, um, you, it, it's really cool now because we've had a lot of guests and a lot of family stay and that wall is covered with like appreciation yeah, gratitude. Imagine, so there, there's for us, it's, it's involving it into the fabric of who we are as a family, that this is a value for us. Mm-hmm. And there's just different ways that we show to, that we find to express it. And so for Anderson, our youngest, like he doesn't necessarily oh, he, write, we'll, yeah, we'll help yeah. him write a word. Like he wrote, you know, Eden, that's our babysitter, right? He mm-hmm. loves Eden. He's like, Oh, I'm grateful for Eden. Right. Or sometimes he'll just draw a truck, right? Cause he loves trucks and that's okay. We let him draw that on the wall <laughs> that, yeah. So that's, uh, um, that's how crazy we are as parents, but those are just some different ideas. And I think that what, whatever speaks to you as a family is what you should do. Well, and I, I, yeah, I almost wish we were doing, you know, a vlog episode because what I can see in the background as we're recording this is, you know, the all the cards that you have up uh, throughout your office, which is just so awesome, you know, just to see all like it's like floor to ceiling almost looks like of all the cards. Yeah. And that idea of like it's something tangible that, yeah, you get to hold on to for however long you want to. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. And if any of you guys, you know, if you get the book or whatever, there's a picture of it, but I have my own gratitude wall in my office, which is like, since I've started the project and I've written a lot of cards, inevitably people reflect it back. People write back and they, they share mm-hmm. how much, whatever you said meant to them or yeah, you know, all that. And so, um, that was, you know, for me, it's like that reminder. So anytime I get a letter, I read it and then I hang it on my wall. Mm-hmm. And so that's for me, the reminder of like, you know, that whatever we're doing here at Mr. Thank you matters that it's having an impact in the world. Oh, definitely. So do you know numbers at this point? I, I, I mean, obviously you can go on the website, you can, you can send a, a thank you card. Yeah. Yeah. Can I explain that a little bit? Yeah, Cause sure. that's so, so as a, so all we are at Mr. Thank you, I mean, it's really simple. We, um, so how the, the vision has evolved is, you know, I wrote my cards every day for a year. And then I, what I started seeing was a lot of people, uh, starting to write cards who heard about my story. Uh, it, you know, it randomly, and obviously you, you saw my Ted talk, which that came out of nowhere because I was, you know, writing a lot of cards and I got to create this really cool experience where a bunch of us wrote cards to somebody who was a pretty influential person in the world and, and they got wind of it. And then they were like, Hey, you know, we would love to have you share your story on a Ted stage. And it was, uh, a lot of things started coming out of it. And then because of that, someone told me someone who had actually handwritten 500 thank you cards since he had met me. And I was blown away he's like dude you should find a way to track all these cards that you're oh yeah just firing around the world so yeah so we created mr thank you.com which you know you can go create a free it's mr 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 thank you.com you create a free profile and you just put in your name email and your zip code reason we have you put your zip code so we know where roughly in the world you are Mm -hmm. and then we don't actually send any cards for anybody all we do is we're a platform to track your own gratitude that you uh, that you sp- spread in the world. And so if you write a card to somebody and we track everyone that you send a card to, um, and then what we do is we give everyone a gratitude map where it shows where they are in the, on the planet. And then it shows a little visual of their card going to that person. And so there's this really cool thing where the more you cards you write, the more it just shows how far your gratitude is spreading all around the country and around the world. And that has been kind of the thing is we're creating this mechanism to really, uh, make gratitude a fun thing to see how far you're reaching. So the mission now is to inspire 74 million thank you cards written around the world, which wow. is and the reason that number is specific is it's 1% of the world's population. At this moment, there's 7.4 billion people. So that's going to keep growing, but 74 million cards is what we want to create. And the reason that came up was I was in high, I was in college and it was kind of right in between when I wrote that card to that woman and, and you know, where we are now. And there was this moment of, I was in a biology class and this professor was talking about, uh, all the bodies of water on the planet. And he was like, you know, there's billion trillions and trillions of gallons of water. Can you imagine how much energy it would take to elevate all the bodies of water by one degree Celsius or Fahrenheit? Mm-hmm. Nobody knew the answer. And he was like a lot. Now he gave us, he gave us a real answer. It was like some bazillion could kill yeah. <laughs> and, and he, and what he was getting at was he was talking about global warming and this concept of collective neglect, having such a negative impact in the world. And so what I saw, and this is with the Mr. Thank you project where I, I saw like a, a, an opportunity was like, okay, that's for collective neglect. What about a collective awareness and a collective decision to do something that's going to make the world better? And that's what I love about 
the Mr. Thank You project and the general, just the ability to write a card to somebody. I mean, it's not hard. Everyone can do it. It, it doesn't cost much. Uh, you, you don't even have to spend any money. You could take a piece Happen. of printer paper yeah. mm-hmm. and write a letter and, and then boom, you made someone's day. And so we know it works. We know it's effective. Uh, it's simple and it's duplicatable. So that's our, that's our process. So our, that's our mission now, which is really to get the, the Mr. Thank you message out to as many people as possible. So whether people share the Ted talk or, you know, I, I come in and speak at an event, uh, or they get a copy of the book or they hear me on an awesome podcast, like what you're doing here, like this is how we're making it happen. Um, as a, uh, as a community. And it's really cool because I, since, doing this like i still write cards a lot but my favorite thing is hearing from people who are like dude i heard your story so i started my own thank you project and i'm not doing five a day but i'm doing one a day for 30 days i'm gonna write three i've got a few people in the country that are writing three cards every day for a year and they're committed to that and i love getting updates from them and just hearing what they've done and and so for me that's the most gratifying thing now is it's kind of like this torch that gets passed Mm -hmm. but we've got this mechanism uh, to track it. And it's this beautiful thing. Every, every I, I probably track it more than I need to, but I go on like all, all this time and I love to see like this day or like every week right now we're averaging like 500 to 700 thank you cards sent around the world. Yeah. And it's just this beautiful thing. Like I can't wait to when we're sending a thousand cards every day, a thousand cards a day. It's, it's just going to be a really cool thing. Sweet, man. Well, I, man, I get to stay and talk to you all day. I'm sure you've got um, more important things to, to get to, but um, on this is great. This is my fun. end, um, yeah, you know, how, how if people want to book you, you know, what email do you typically give out? How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, best way to, to stay in touch with me is, uh, you know, my, my direct email is john, J-O-H-N, at com, And then my assistant, you can just, or you can go directly through uh, the Mr. Thank You website as a contact section. We also have our address on there. So anyone ever spends written correspondence, you don't have to ask for my address. It's on site, so you can find it really easily. And uh, um, yeah, so you can just communicate with us that way. Uh, or my handle on basically every social media platform is at the Mr. Thank You is, is where I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. So uh, that's it. And then can I, can I give something away to your audience? Because there's something that I, I always like to give. If, sure, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so invariably people are like, wow, this is a great idea, John. Like I'm going to do this. I want to write a bunch of cards every day forever. And, and I always say, don't, don't do that. Right. Like it's, <laughs> it's, you got to give you really committed and really ready to do it. So what I say is like, take a small challenge for yourself. And so there's two things I'll say. Number one is if you go to Mr. Thank you.com slash 30, the number is three zero. Mm-hmm. And there's a free 30 day, uh, 30 day challenge PDF. Download that. That'll help. Awesome. The second thing, and this is on like a micro scale, because I always try to get to like the what's the one thing you can do now. And I would say take out a piece of paper and write or your phone or whatever and write five people right now that you think deserve to hear a thank you from you. Like who are those five people? And then once you've written those five, imagine that you're going to die tomorrow and you only get to thank one of them. Wow. Who's that person? Circle them, put a star next to the name, and then write them a card today. Okay. And then as you write the card, after you write it, just pay attention. How do you feel? How are you, like, what's your emotional state? Just be aware of those things and just notice, like, how, what might life be like if this is how you got to feel every day? Hmm. It's, it's all about just, like, that micro moment experience to see, you know, how this is for you. And then beyond, and then send the letter, right? That's the, that's the final yeah. thing there. And the reason I'll, and what I'll finish with is like this, this, uh, crazy thing that happened at month two of the thank you project where I got a call from my best friend, Nick and Nick, uh, was the best man at my wedding. You know, I've known him forever and he called me to let me know that his dad had passed away. And it was really unfortunate because dad, his dad was somebody that I had, you know, grown up next to, like he made dinners all the time and he was just, yeah. you know, very, you know, he was a part of my life and to see my, my best friend's dad pass away was, was awful to make it worse. I had written Nick's dad a thank you card and had not sent it yet. Hmm. It was sitting oh, on my goodness. desk, liter- it was sitting on my desk, literally right in front of me while I'm talking to Nick. And I just feel like a piece of crap. Cause I had that card for a month and I didn't send it to him because I was just like, I got busy and I was just, Oh, I'll get to this later. I'll get to this later. Mm-hmm. And it was just this, the, this moment of like, I, I hate that it happened. Right. I still did send it. I sent it to my friend, Nick. And I said, this was for your dad. 
please read it to him for me. Right. And so, uh, and he did that however he chose to do that. So there's what well, I, I hate that that happened. Like I, I really am not happy that I experienced that, but I, I am glad that it happened because it created a sense of urgency mm-hmm. that this matters now. And I can't tell you how many people that I've, I've shared this with and they wrote a letter to somebody and you know, they wound up telling me they're like, man, it was crazy. Like literally like two months later or six months later, they, they passed away. And that was one of the last, that was one of the last valuable communications I got to have with that person. And so uh, there's a sense of urgency in this where that it matters that what if you got to be at the end of your life and not have any regrets of conversations you didn't have or apologies you didn't give or, uh, or forgiveness you didn't give. And there's just so much value and benefit to doing this on whatever scale works for you. You don't have to be crazy like me. If you do one a day for 30 days, if all you did was write that one card, that's what matters. Hmm. Man. Yeah. And that's, um, just, such a like you were saying uh, that idea of the the gift even though you know it it sucked but it kind of drove home that that message of you know do it you know do it now because you don't know (laughs) so man thank you so much for for your time very gracious of you to to come on and and just share the project and everything that you're trying to do oh man i um Really looking forward to to keeping tabs on what you're doing and front row dads and Mr. Thank You Project. Uh, we just we need more people like you and what you're doing out there. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Hey, thanks for having me, John. I appreciate it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing John Israel from the Mr. Thank You Project. Uh, again, uh, I was so glad that I was able to, to sit down and talk with him and just learn a little bit about what he's trying to do. And I, like I had said before, I, I just, I know it's so needed. I know in my own life, I struggle with this all the time. I, I forget this a uh, simple message daily, unfortunately. And, um, you know, just trying to keep that in the forefront of our minds. You know, if you have something positive to say about somebody or to somebody, do it. You know, you, you just never know uh, when you will miss out on that opportunity. And I've missed out on it uh, a lot more than I am comfortable with. And it, it's something I'm, I'm trying to change. It's, it's, it doesn't always go the way I want it to. Um, but I, I definitely think, you know, people need to hear it more. You know, we talk about that um, positive to negative ratio of, you know, three positives to one negative. Or, I mean, it should be even higher. I mean, uh, with... Gottman Counseling, they talk about, you know, five or eight to, to one ratio. I mean, that that's really what we should be striving for. And I know that it, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable uh, because uh, either it's not their normal love language uh, that they deal in, uh, and I get that it, it makes us vulnerable, you know, that you, you don't know how somebody else is going to react to that. It, it may not come out the way that you planned. Um, but even just making the effort, just um, letting them know that you're you're thinking about them or you, you see something that they did and that you appreciate it uh, is just a huge step um, in elevating the level of, of gratitude in the world, even just by, by 1%. So, uh, you know, get out there and, and tell somebody, do it today right now. So that wraps up episode 18. In OTC episode 19, I'll be speaking with licensed clinical social worker Allison per year about eating disorders. If you liked what you've heard on the podcast, please be sure to subscribe and review wherever you're catching this podcast at. You can check out any links and resources on our detailed show notes or other episodes that have been archived at www.parentfamilysolutions.com forward slash podcast. If you want to catch up on what Parenting and Family Solutions is doing, be sure to follow us on any of your favorite social media apps. 
This is your host, John Dennis, saying good night. The author and host of this podcast is not engaged in a therapeutic relationship with the listener and cannot give counseling advice without a confidential appointment. Listeners should be sure to consult with a licensed therapist in their area or seek emergency medical attention if they are experiencing psychological difficulty. A special thanks to the Topsy Turvies for the show theme song. Their song, Like a Living Dead, can be found at topsyturvies.bandcamp.com. The bump interview track was the song 1973 by Bruno E. The author and host of this podcast is John Dennis. Special thanks to producer and editor Trevor Groff.